So in this video, we are going to go over all things stethoscopes. So many of you have purchased your own stethoscope and it will be your best friend throughout your nursing career. So we really recommend buying a quality stethoscope. Um, quality stethoscopes, Littmans are great stethoscopes. MDF also makes good st uh, stethoscopes as well. Um, so those are great quality. Littman has been around forever. MDF is a little bit newer, um, but still great quality. I've used both. Um, I have a Littman because MDF was not around when I got my Littman back in nursing school, um, but I still have it to this day. So um, I wanna go over uh, the parts of it. So make sure that you have the, the stethoscope that you have purchased. Um, make sure that you have that readily available because there are um, a few things you're gonna wanna do to help get yourself ready in using it. So I'm gonna use this stethoscope. Um, this is one of the Littmans here in the lab and I'm gonna use this as a demonstration. And then I'm gonna show you a couple different kinds of stethoscopes because they do, uh, they do come in different um, styles. The best thing I can tell you is you need to read the manual that comes with your Littmans, with your MDFs, with whatever uh, stethoscope you purchased. But again, if you don't get one that's a good quality, you're gonna have a really hard time hearing the things that you need to hear. And you're gonna use this every day, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 times a day. So uh, in your nursing profession. So, get invest, invest in one. Once you invest in one and you find a quality one, put your name on it. These things walk off and um, I can't tell you how many, uh, my, my stethoscope means a lot to me because my grandmother gave it to me in nursing school and she's since passed. Um, but I put like stars and hearts all over it because I wanted to make sure it always came back to me or I could identify it if somebody had borrowed it, maybe not given it back. Um, all well intended, but these things can walk. Um, had a, you know many many providers are like, hey, can I can I use your stethoscope real quick? And um, then I followed them and made sure I got it back. Put something on it that's going to identify it, whether you get it engraved, whether you get the little thing that goes on it, whatever it is you do put a Sharpie on it, whatever you gotta do, make sure your name is on it. So once you've done that, you are ready to set this up so that you can hear out of it. So the first thing you need to do is pull it out of its box. You'll notice that it will come with um, other ear pieces. So you can try different ear pieces to see which ones fit your ears the best. Um, uh, and you will also note that some of the ear pieces here will be straight across. First thing you need to do is make sure that there is a slight bend. So you can see that there is a slight bend. Okay, if I held it that, it kind of makes a point. Um, if I put those ear tips together, you do not want them straight across going in because your ears are not shaped like that. Your canals, your ear canals are not straight in, they're curved. So you wanna make sure that this fits in well. Now, that's the first step. Once you get it angled where you have them coming to, you know, this little bend in it, okay? Then you wanna make sure that you're putting this on correctly. If you put your stethoscope ears in the wrong way, you are going to hear nothing. So if this is the first time you've ever used one, um, or maybe you're going to listen for a, a blood pressure and you can't hear anything, check your ears first and make sure you haven't accidentally put them in incorrectly. So the way that you do this, you see that there's kind of this bend in it, okay? Make sure your nose can fit into it, okay? So they should be pointed away from you. And that is how you put them into your ears, is so the bend is away is away from you, okay? So you wanna put them in and they are fitting well. I, I can hear well out of it, but to test to make sure that you can hear well, gently rub, don't tap, don't hit it. It's so loud, guys, gently rub. If you can hear it rubbing, then you're good. If you can't hear anything, take your diaphragm head, because again, we'll, and I'll talk about the different styles in a second. Take your diaphragm and flip it until it clicks into place, okay? Flip it until it clicks into place. And what this does is engages either the this side here or this side here. Now when I rub, I hear it really loud. Okay, so now I know that my diaphragm, this side, is now turned on. I can hear out of this side, okay? Now, flip it back the other way, and now gently touch inside here. And as you kind of push your, uh, brush your finger over top of that, you can hear that really well. That here, this small area, this is called the bell of the stethoscope, okay? This bigger circle is called the diaphragm of the stethoscope. All right, so 
The diaphragm is going to pick up high-pitched sounds. That's pretty much everything. Bowel sounds, breath sounds, um, heart sounds, okay? Those high-pitched sounds. The low-pitched sounds is what you want to use the bell for. So think of it as bellow. The word when you bellow, right? It's for low pitch sound. So bell is for low pitch sound. And what is a low pitch sound but a turbulent flow? Think of that rapid river, right? That turbulent flow is what we're listening for. When you have turbulent blood flow, that's going to create this swooshing, deep, throaty, low noise. And the bell is what we're going to pick that up with. The bell, when you're using this side, has to be placed just lightly so that you're making contact with the skin. You do not want to push firmly. When you push down and you push firmly, your skin will tighten up. And when that tightens up, it acts just like this piece here. When it tightens up, it starts to act like a diaphragm. You're gonna miss your low pitch sounds. All you're gonna get are your high pitch sounds. So for proper use of the bell, grab it by the neck of the stethoscope and let the weight of the head of the stethoscope be the only pressure and lay it lightly on the skin. Now, you would never be listening here on the forum. I'm just showing you how we want to place it lightly, but then also make sure that it is has connection with all of the skin. If the head of your stethoscope, whether you're using the diaphragm or the bell, has part of it that's hanging off, it's not firmly on the skin, you're gonna pick up ambient noise from the environment and it's gonna be more difficult to hear those pulses or breath sounds or whatever it is, okay? so. Bell, you want, it's gonna be light and low. Light touch for low noises. Where the diaphragm is for high pitch sounds and that one, you wanna press more firmly. You can use this approach where you do a V to kind of push down, use your fingers to give counter pressure to whatever it is that you're using if you, or whatever you're listening to if you need to. You can also hold around the rubber rim here. You can hold that and push down. You can hold down lower here on that side. What you don't wanna do is put your finger inside of this at any point in time, okay? Cause that's gonna pick up some, um, uh, your own noises, creaky fingers, all of that. Um, so you don't wanna alter the sounds by you engaging in some sort of noise. So you can hold it on the rubber rim here. You can even hold it around the rubber edge here but this generally is a good technique to use or use this to kind of push down, okay? Okay, so you have your ear tips. Again, change out your ear tips and see what works best for you. Um, you have the ear pieces here and then you have the tubing, okay? Then you have the chest piece, which contains both the diaphragm and the bell of, um, of your stethoscope. Treat these kindly, clean them well. What I mean by treat them kindly, never leave them in a hot car or in any extreme temperatures. Um, check your manuals and see what they're made of, but a lot of them have some sort of rubbery kind of material to make them nice and flexible. Um, so extreme temperatures can start doing damage to your tubing itself. So usually keep it in a locker, maybe in a backpack, uh, maybe in a little, you know, like a, a, a hard case so that it doesn't get bent, whatever it is, but take care of them. Um, and then clean them. We want to clean them between every single patient we see. So there are cavicide wipes in the hospitals. There are also cavicide wipes here in the labs as well that you wipe down your stethoscope every single time. And then before you use this on a patient, wipe down with alcohol. Do it in front of the patient. It really provides a great rapport because they see like, oh wow, that's cool. Thanks for cleaning that before you use that on me. Okay? All right. So. Another style of the stethoscope, you can see this is also a Lippmann, just a different style that they sell. <clears throat> and you will notice that the diaphragm looks the same, the tubing, the earpieces, the tubing is just a little bit thicker. Um, I can feel it in my hands here. It still has the ability to turn to engage the bell or the diaphragm. And on this piece, it does have a little tiny dot. So depending on what is facing is what is on, okay? But not all stethoscopes have that. So the only difference here isn't so much the diaphragm, it's the fact that on this side, you can see the difference. It has this plastic piece across it. So what this is, is a built-in smaller uh, diaphragm, okay? Which is super cool. 
it gets into um, spaces like if you had an adult that was like maybe a little bit more bony you can kind of push down and use that in the small areas like listening up here to apices of the lungs um, but it also is a great pediatric stethoscope as well um, read your manual and I know from experience that this one here uh, this style again this is not all the styles that have this so you again read your manual but this style here if you use this lightly on the skin it's a bell but when you push down it has this plastic piece to turn into a nice diaphragm um, this one just does not have that plastic piece but you can also use this as a smaller stethoscope will you pick up every like will this pick up better sounds using this here on a pediatric patient, yeah, it will. Um, so if you're somebody that's thinking about doing the ED or you don't know if you wanna do adult or peds, this might be a good option for you so that you have everything kind of in one. Um, but I'll tell you that I have a Litman that's like, just like this one and I use this on my pediatric patients as well and push down for a diaphragm and it works great for me too, okay? And then the last style um, that is out there is one that is a single head stethoscope, okay? So this one here, you notice has two earpieces on it. So this is our teaching stethoscope, so we can hear what you hear. Um, and those are in the labs. Um, <clears throat> but this style here is a single head stethoscope. So you can see that there's only one diaphragm here. So then where's the bell? It's built in to this style of stethoscope. So if you do get a single head, make sure you're reading your manual, but majority of them, but the, the nice ones like this, this is a, the 3M Littman. Um, I'm not sure which, uh, what, it doesn't have anything else on it, but um, the bell is actually built in to the diaphragm. So if you are using this lightly on the skin, right? Just using that neck here, let the head of the stethoscope be the only weight, and you're using it lightly, then it's a bell. But when you push down, on it, it becomes a diaphragm, okay? So make sure that you know how to use your stethoscope, invest in something that you're going to um, like, love, um, and I cannot stress to you enough, personalize it, put your put something on it for identification, um, because even as something as simple as leaving it in the lab here and somebody accidentally picks it up because somebody has the same color as you do, um, there's no way to tell if it's yours or theirs, right? So just always put your name on it in some way, shape, or form. Go to Amazon, Google that. There's like cool things. You can have them engraved, but identify them, okay? And that's everything that you need to know about stethoscopes.